Ja und somit herzlich willkommen zu einem neuen Reaction Video hier auf dem Kanal. Heute schauen wir uns das Starfield Direct an, das Gameplay Deep Dive Video, das schlappe 45 Minuten geht. Wie ich schon im letzten Reaction Video gesagt habe, möchte ich ja diese Starfield Trailer und Gameplay Videos ein bisschen aufarbeiten, da ich die bisher selber noch nicht gesehen habe und ähm, das Spiel schon bald rauskommt. Von daher würde ich jetzt sagen, gehen wir einfach rein. Wie gesagt, geht 45 Minuten, also ziemlich lange und wahrscheinlich auch ziemlich ähm, viel Informationsüberfluss, die, den wir hier kriegen werden. Aber ja, mal schauen, was uns da erwartet. Let's go! Bethesda Game Studios. Bei 45 Minuten gehe ich davon aus, dass wir ziemlich viele neue Szenen sehen werden. Und ich weiß, ich bin spät dran. Wahrscheinlich hat man das schon überall gesehen. Aber ich wollte jetzt trotzdem noch darauf reagieren. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to Bethesda Game Studios. You know, we've been so lucky over the decades to make the kind of games that we love here. And that's thanks to all of you, from the Elder Scrolls, the Fallout, We love creating these worlds and playing in them just as much as you do. And throughout all that time, we'd often talk about and dream up the space game. What if we could take that feeling of being who you want to be and exploring a new world, but set it in space, where you weren't really limited in where you could go or what you could do? And that is Starfield. Obviously, we've come a long way since then with the games we've built, our technology, and all of us here in the studio. We've done so much together, but, well, we've never tried to make a game like this. Today, you'll get to hear from many on the team and see so much of what we think makes our game special. So, let's jump in and take a look. Starfield is our first new universe in over 25 years, but it's still a Bethesda RPG through and through where you step into a new world and you Sieht get that feeling gut aus. of unlimited possibilities. But this time, it's not just one world. It's over a thousand worlds. Because the choice of where to go, ganz, oh, it's not all... Ganz kurz hier. Tausend Welten. Tausend Planeten. Ich weiß, die werden wahrscheinlich, höchstwahrscheinlich, prozedural mit einer KI generiert sein. Da frage ich mich dann, wie spannend sind diese Planeten? Wie unterschiedlich sind sie? Und lohnt es sich wirklich irgendwie, keine Ahnung, 200 von denen zu besuchen? I don't know. In einem anderen Video, glaube ich, wurde ja schon gesagt, dass es irgendwie die großen Planeten von Hand gecreated äh, sind, also kreiert sind, genau. Von daher wird da sicherlich viel De viele Details drin se sein in diesen einzelnen Planeten, die eben von Hand gemacht sind. Aber oh, diese tausend Stück, hm, ich weiß ja nicht. Finde ich, hört sich ein bisschen äh, zu, zu überschätzt an. Wenn man versteht, was ich meine. Aber ja, muss man wahrscheinlich dann einfach im Spiel sehen, wie das dann sein wird. Ja, weiter geht's. Ours. It's yours. And it wasn't until now that we had the technology to create it. From the rocks at your feet to the mountains in the distance. To the people and creatures that live in these worlds. That isn't just a backdrop. That moon is actually there orbiting the planet. Yes, you can visit it too. We realistically simulate the galaxy around you. Hört sich schon Our ziemlich nice lighting an. model uses real-time global illumination to light the world based on the type of star and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere. Ja, das Licht sieht auch mega gut aus. We also have an all-new animation system. Schön atmosphärisch. And of course, You can play it in third person. 
and you can play it in first person. We love exploration and rewarding it, but you do explore differently in this game given its scale. That usually involves exploring an area you've landed in. You can collect resources, do a mission, and maybe even stumble upon something unexpected. I wanted mine. Space a punk. <laughs> Das Jetpack macht natürlich den Kampf sehr interessant, kann man strategisch angehen und bringt eine ganz neue Dynamik mit sich. Sieht interessant aus. Finde ich cool. Wie auch schon gesagt, das hat, finde ich ziemlich schön. Es sieht ziemlich clean aus, zeigt alles an, was es soll und Eben auch nicht zu viel. Und auch modern, ja. Passt einfach zu dem Game. We do love stuff and all of the items allowing you to pick everything up. And you can view all that in your data menu. This is the hub for everything you're doing, from your skills, to your ship, your missions, and your inventory. We love to pack a ton of detail in every object, from all of your weapons, to spacesuits, to food. We just obsess over the details, and food, we obsess over food. Okay, yeah. When you're done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We have companions and crew you can take with you. I left Vasco here back at my ship. Welcome back, Captain Howard. And he can even say your name. Let's head out. Ich finde es ein bisschen schade, es sieht so aus, als ob es da wie so eine Zwischensequenz gibt, wenn man vom Planet abhebt oder auch landet. Also ist es nicht so ein schön smoother Übergang in die Atmosphäre. Wahrscheinlich soll das auch ein Ladebildschirm darstellen im Hintergrund. Und da musste man das vielleicht so lösen, weil man es auch eben mit dieser, ich glaube es war die Creation Engine, die ja Bethesda da benutzt, wie auch schon Skyrim und Fallout gemacht wurde. Und die hat halt, ja die ist ein bisschen in die Jahre gekommen, habe ich schon gehört. Jetzt haben sie zwar hier geupdatet, glaube ich, wenn ich das richtig verstanden habe oder mitbekommen habe, aber hätte man vielleicht auch was anderes setzen können, um das zu umgehen. Weil es sieht zumindest hier so aus, dass es so sein wird. Und das finde ich ein bisschen schade. Aber irgendwo muss man ja wahrscheinlich Abstriche machen. Our mission was to convey the wonder and majesty of space exploration, to evoke the romance of the golden age of early space flight. And we've been referring to this approach as NASA Punk. This means a design language where the tech is advanced, yet still looks grounded and relatable. For us, it's, it's that contrast. That's where the visual interest is. Obviously, the NASA, which is the rigid, hard function over style, and then punk, which is all about style. You can see that visual style coming through in your ship. Your ship is your home for you and your crew. And like many of the spaces in the it has a slightly retro and analog touch. A bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi, where everything is well used, worn, and lived in. Alrighty. What's the sure. plan, Captain? This is your star map. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big. And it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren but resource heavy. Zoom out even further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here you can plot a course to ones that are light years away. 
This uses your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems. And you will need to upgrade your ship and skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, we'll plot a course to the Alpha Centauri system where we can find the city of jump. New Atlantis. Gravity jump. Okay, ja, das ist noch verständlich. Schon, sonst würde man wahrscheinlich Stunden fliegen. Cool, dass auch andere Raumschiffe da rumfliegen in diesem Planeten. Diese Sequenz hier meine ich. Halt. Ja. Kann man sich drüber streiten. Kommt auch daran auf. Kommt auch darauf an, wie lange diese Sequenz sein wird. Oder ob es vielleicht eine Sequenz ist, die man überspringen könnte. Wenn es kein Ladebildschirm ist. Mal schauen. Atlantis, your eyes are guided upwards to just these boundless, vast buildings. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just in size, but also in the amount of custom art, crowds, and quests. So the main focus when we're designing a city is obviously what supports the story. We try and tell as many small stories as possible. This is a colony war memorial. It's a few moments of gameplay that make the space feel like it's full of oh. real characters that are going about their day-to-day -day lives. It's paralyzing if you really stop and think about it. Buddy, it's coffee. It's also where your adventure with Constellation begins. Die Uhr ist cool. Die gab es auch bei der Collect Collector's Edition mit dabei, glaube ich. Hätte ich schon gerne gehabt, aber die war in der Schweiz viel zu teuer. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. By the time you meet them, Constellation is sort of seen as this mythical group. Most people don't even know they exist anymore. They're the last true explorers in the galaxy, and they're trying to find the answers to some of humanity's biggest questions. The artifacts are so different, so alien. And I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. The artifact. If you could place it on the table here. Oh my god. Look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. It's definitely an eclectic cast of characters. You've got Sarah Morgan, the ex-soldier and adventurer, now Constellation's leader. Matteo, the theologian who believes that there's definitely something else out there. Noel, the gifted scientist and Sarah Morgan's protege. And Walter, a very successful businessman in the settled systems and Constellation's financier. Anything goes as long as you have the money. There's also Vlad, the ex-pirate. Sam Coe, the former space cowboy. And Barrett. You know what I hate about these pirates? Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. The journey you take with Constellation is just the first of many you'll embark on. The Settled Systems is home to all kinds of different stories, people, and adventures for you to uncover. The United Colonies is where you'll find New Atlantis, the first major human settlement in space. The people who live here value law, discipline, and the legacy of humanity. They consider themselves the true children of Earth. You ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies even get your UC citizenship? New Atlantis isn't the only city within the United Colonies. The city of Sidonia on Mars to this day serves as the largest mining facility for the United Colonies. Beyond the United Colonies' reach, you might find yourself in a much more wild and independent coalition of star systems. This is Freestar Collective Space. The capital of the Freestar Collective is Aquila City. The Stone Root Inn is an Aquila City fixture. 
تو رکورد پنیز می شد Ich weiß ja nicht. Entweder macht es die Videoqualität oder ich muss halt wirklich einfach schon wieder sagen, die Charaktere passen irgendwie da nicht rein. Wenn das so wirklich aussieht, finde ich so schade. Ich meine, die Unreal Engine 5 gibt es ja jetzt. Die, da kann man wirklich fotorealistische Gesichter und Menschen Charaktere gestalten. Und die, ja, passt halt irgendwie einfach nicht. Keine Ahnung, wenn man zum Beispiel hier die Jacke anschaut, mega hochauflösend, mega detailliert, dann die Haare, so, ja. Und die Haut irgendwie so ziemlich, wie schon mal gesagt, eben so plastisch. So irgendwie keine Falten, nichts. Kann jetzt auch hier nur in diesem Shot sein, aber es fällt mir irgendwie immer wieder auf, wenn ich da Charaktere in der Nahansicht sehen, diesen, diesem Video in Starfield. Ich hoffe, im Spiel kommt es anders rüber als jetzt in diesen Videos. Wirklich. Aber ich finde, wenn man jetzt das hier so mit Skyrim ähm, abgleicht, was ja irgendwie schon 11, 12, keine Ahnung wie viele Jahre alt ist, wenn ich sehe, die Leute dort fast ein bisschen realistischer aus. Schwierig, schwierig. Aber gut, ist ja nur meine Meinung. Von daher muss ich, muss das jeder selber wissen und man kann es erst wissen, wenn man das Spiel gespielt hat. Werden wir ja sehen. Weil alle anderen Kreaturen sind ziemlich schön und Mega detailgetreu aus. Ist natürlich nur Meckern auf hohem Niveau. Klar. Ja, hier sieht man jetzt wenigstens ein bisschen so Falten und Poren. Ja. Aber ich finde einfach mit dem Gesamtkonzept passt das nicht so überein. Der Anzug sieht mega gut aus. Schön scharf, detailliert. Und sie sticht halt so raus. Aber gut. Jetzt Stadt hat ein bisschen was von Cyberpunk. Everyone has been chewed up and ground up by Neon. Try not to get yourself killed, all right? Outside the bounds of civilized space, there are still plenty of unclaimed systems to explore, but these areas are also home to the most hostile factions in the galaxy. The great serpent hungers. All heathens shall be made dust in time. A new face. This is the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile. They think the galaxy is theirs. They are wrong. It belongs to the Crimson Fleet. It always has. In Starfield, we're pushing our cities and settlements further than we ever have before. It's all there, waiting for you. A slice of humanity's future. So, ready to get out there? Sieht schon ziemlich throughout the galaxy. There are so many things to see aus. and stories to experience. But the most important story is the one that you tell. I'm the type of person who spends hours in character creation, and I think people are going to be really excited when they see all of the improvements we've made. One of the biggest overhauls was done through our character generation system. We scanned a wide range of faces from different age groups and ethnicities. And by mixing and matching all that data, we were able to create highly detailed and diverse characters. We use that exact system to create all of the characters and NPCs you're going to see in the game. So any character you see almost always is a character you could make yourself. Hey, come on. 
Come on. Okay, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? You start your character creation journey as though you're cycling through employee records. You'll pick from a lineup of 40 presets, and that'll be your starting point. Okay, sieht von Charakter zu Charakter unterschiedlich aus. Unterschiedlich gut aus, finde ich. Noch mal kurz. Familiar? You start your character creation journey as though you're cycling through employee records. Bei manchen sehen einfach die Haare auch nicht, auch nicht so schön aus. Hier sieht es jetzt sehr gut aus, wenn nicht bei dieser Person. Aber hier zum Beispiel so. You start your character creation journey as though you're cycling through employee records. You'll pick from a lineup of 40 presets and that'll be your... Und auch hier der Bart. Finde ich, hätte man sicherlich besser machen können. Auch hier die Haare so, na ja. Aber die Gesichtszüge sehen ziemlich schön aus. Mit diesen Falten. Das sieht, das sieht echt aus. Glaubwürdig vor allem. Biometric ID, Body, Face, Background, Traits. Personal Record. Employee Number. Your starting point. Body walls, guy. Your journey style, from there can be tone. as detailed or as quick as you want it to be. This new system has more to offer than ever before. Kann man wahrscheinlich wieder Stunden verbringen. Also, the character generation system we've ever had. We let the player get as close as possible to make whatever they want with the various facial morphs you can blend together. The ja, dermesthetic and makeup, blemishes, nicht so scars, scars, piercings, teeth settings. It's a lot. But I think it's the most fun to use. Character creation is more than just how you look. This is also where zusammen. you start to decide who you want to be. That's where backgrounds come in. Backgrounds give you a bit of backstory and start you out with three basic skills. From chef to dusty. You know, the crew still has a betting pool about which restaurant critic you must have crossed to wind up here. What's great about backgrounds is you never know when yours is going to come in handy. You could be in the middle of a fancy restaurant, talking to some guy, and suddenly you learn he needs a beast hunter to help track down a monster. Fine. I probably should stick to professionals anyway, given what happened the last time. We're also giving you the option to customize your build even further by letting you pick up to three traits. Traits are completely optional, and they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. You could choose to meet your biggest fan. Is it really, really you? He'll join your crew and he'll give you gifts. Because this, this is kind of cool, though. For this constant commentary. I can't believe I get to stand near you, breathing the same air. I've got to have every molecule. My favorite trait is kid stuff. You have to pay some credits to support your parents, but they're very sweet and it's really fun to go visit them. Honey, we got ourselves a visitor. Oh my God. I came across some hostile zealots in space, but because I had chosen a trait that made me the same religion as them, I was able to get by without any issues. There's another great one that gives you a damage buff when your health is low. Wait, but puts. mercenaries will randomly show okay. up and try to kill you. No matter what you choose, there will be plenty of ways for you to tell your story. And if you want to remove a trait, there are ways to do that too. What a view! It's a feast for the eyes! Off we go! To another adventure! <lacht> we'll let you discover that on your own. Okay. Aber ganz kurz. Ganz kurz nochmal zurück, sorry. Look, this is also where you start to decide who you want to be. That's where backgrounds come in. Boah. Das heißt, mit der außer diesen vielen Backgrounds, und man kann drei Stück auswählen, und auch drei, drei Traits, hat wohl so ziemlich 
wie jeder eine andere Geschichte oder erlebt andere Dinge, die man hier auf diesem Planeten erleben kann. Finde ich cool, hat was Spezielles. Ich fällt gerade das Wort nicht ein. Das ist doof. <lacht> Ihr wisst schon, ich meine einfach, es hat sowas, ähm, die Geschichte entwickelt sich mit dir mit. Je nachdem, was du auswählst, hast du eine andere Erfahrung oder eine andere Experience in diesem Teil oder in diesem Teil der Geschichte oder erlebst, erlebst etwas anderes, was vielleicht andere nicht erleben würden. Also so ziemlich abgestuft auf die Person, die man hier spielt. Was ziemlich cool ist. Weiter geht's mit den Skills. Das wird ein langes Video. Once you've built the perfect character, that's when your journey can really begin. We took what we loved about skills and perks from our previous games and put them together to create an all new skill system. Each time you level up, you get a skill point, which can be used to unlock or rank up skills. Physical, Social, Combat, Science, Tech. Ranks are unlocked by completing challenges associated with that skill. Challenges become increasingly difficult as you work your way to higher ranks. With our five different skill trees and four ranks per skill, there's a lot to choose from. I like the Xeno Sociology skill because it lets you mind control aliens. <laughs> nice. Boost pack out of the gate. I'm boost pack in everywhere. Das würde ich wahrscheinlich auch nehmen. I like maxing out my physical tree so I can get neuro strikes and just punch my way through combat. Okay. That Kann man machen. Invest in the skills that suit your playstyle. I'm very much a stealth player. So. I'm out there pickpocketing everyone. Ja, das versuche ich auch gerne immer. Favorite part about being stealthy is slowly creeping through vents like you're in a movie and then jumping out and springing on people. Whenever possible, I like to talk my way through situations. Is the area off limits? Fine, I'll issue auch you an access card. Vielleicht? I'm more of a run and gun player. I like doing the death from above thing where I boost pack over guys and I throw landmines at them. I like blowing stuff up. Exploration is a key aspect of all our games. In Starfield, there are full star systems with new life, resources, and adventures. Our team worked hard to strike a balance between fun and realism. We studied data from NASA and a multitude of other sources to help us make the world feel believable from the way we approached planetary atmospheres to the way we placed biomes based on the planet's distance from the sun. Once we had created a grounded world, we could start looking at all the things that make that world fun. When you leave a planet and head into space, you'll be navigating asteroid fields, having chance meetings with interesting strangers, dogfighting in space, and exploring derelict ships. It's all out there. Ultimately, it's about rewarding your curiosity. Because whether it's on the surface of a planet, the alleys of a city, or the vastness of space, you never know what you'll find.
space exploration is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like having another character or home you can make all your own. I think you'll be blown away by the amount of stuff you can do. Es muss schon cool sein, bei so einem Entwicklerstudio zu arbeiten. Und man dann die Chance hat, so ein Spiel zu entwickeln und auch schon während dem Entwicklungsstatus Status? Status? Was? Egal. Zu spielen, bevor jeder andere, jede andere Person das in die Hände bekommt. Das muss schon ziemlich cool sein. Und auch also auszutesten, wie es funktioniert, ob ich das so richtig ins Spiel implementiert habe. Das finde ich schon irgendwie cool. You can buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship. And hire a crew to keep it up and running. And it all starts in spaceports. Every spaceport has a ship technician where you can purchase, sell, and modify ships. Anything I can help you with? Maybe you start off with a speedy fighter that's perfect for bounty hunting. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter to run cargo missions, or even do a little smuggling. For now though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize and upgrade everything you see here. And you have What? two ways to do that. You can quickly upgrade individual systems like your weapons or shields, or you can deep dive and enter the shipbuilder mode. Here you can change anything from the systems to the look and layout. Ach, du Adding a new habitat module can give you more room for crew. Übertreibt es halt völlig. And howling can change your ship's overall silhouette. An improved grav drive allows for longer distance space jumps. You can even fully customize your paint job to get the exact look you want. The parts you choose to build with don't just affect your ship's stats. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. You can have modules for crafting or for storing and displaying your weapons. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look and feel to every piece of your ship. From living quarters to cargo holds, mess halls and control rooms. Boah. Das wird auch Zeit fressen. Our modified Frontier is a practical ship, but with a little creativity, your ship can look like almost anything you want. It's a bit odd, but one of my favorite ways of customizing ships is um, I make them look like animals. <laughs> the HMS Platypus, as I called it. Yeah. Where it had a, like a giant tail to it. And we've done spiders, we've done mechs. <laughs> so it's really whatever your imagination is. And while you can build your home fuck? among the stars the way you want to, you're probably not the only person who will call your ship home. Ready to lift off when you are, Captain. Engines ready. The Frontier is fueled and ready, Captain. Some of the members of Constellation can join you on your journey. These companions can serve on your crew, and they'll always be there when you travel. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. Each companion comes with their own valuable skills for your ships and outposts, as well as unique quest lines. Eventually, some friendships might blossom into romance. I don't know that I've ever really loved anyone except you. And if you're looking for a little extra help on your ship, you can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Got any room on your ship for someone like me? You'll also meet potential crew members out in the world. Still think there might be a spot so for me on your ship? To get off this rock. Assign crew to your ship or outposts and their unique skills will affect how they run. And just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco, for instance. Is nice. He's designed around the, the core basics of a NASA machine. Please avoid getting shot. You might die. I still wanted to give it almost a humanoid personality, so I elongated the limbs. This tends to make him feel more human-like, 
and give him a little personality. It is a shame. Exploration requires so much bloodshed. Using the ship building tools and crew selection features in Starfield, you'll be able to build and captain the ship of your dreams. And now, let's take to the sky. We're putting you in the cockpit of your very own spaceship and telling you that you can do pretty much anything. And that is really cool for us as developers. Spaceflight should be exciting and dangerous, and you should feel like you're in complete control every step of the way. We've extended that sense of control to ship combat. It's not about just hitting your triggers to fire your weapons. It's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system. Boosting power to your engines will make your ship faster. Powering up the grab drives will shorten the amount of time it takes before you can make a jump. And moving your power to your weapons and shields means you're ready for a fight. You should always be on your toes because you're not alone out there. Unlocking the targeting control system skill will allow you to zero in on specific subsystems of the ship you target. Cash pendant? After destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. You can always turn any ship that engages you into scrap. But you can also take a more personal approach by docking with the enemy vessel and boarding their ship. Once you've taken control of an enemy ship, it's yours. Add it to your fleet. Ich finde es cool, dass sehr viele Elemente hier verschiedene ähm, Wege haben, das anzugehen. Also eben nichts, ob man das Schiff übernimmt, es zerstört, davon wegjumpt mit einem Jump Boost. Finde ich cool. Und das haben ja hier offensichtlich sehr viele Elemente. Ich so verschiedene an Gehensweisen, wie man vorgehen kann. Somit wird das also noch mehr persönlicher, wenn man es eben anders spielt als jemand anders. And retrieve it at any spaceport. But space is way more than fighting for your life. Just like when you're planet side, there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure like these massive star yards. Walk the halls, talk to the crew, maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship. A civilian in my star yard. Let's see about getting you a proper ship, one worthy of you. Maybe you'll dock with a gigantic battleship like the UC Vigilance. Or rub elbows with the galaxy's wealthy elite on a cruise ship fit for the stars. There are plenty of personal encounters to be had as well. You can hail any ship you come across to trade, swap info, or maybe even commit an act of piracy. Let's do this. When I'm playing, I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go like the more piracy routes. Um, I want to take over ships. I'm going to board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal all the sandwiches and put them 
you know, in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. I don't want to play the hero, um, but I want to go out and just start taking things from people as quickly as possible. Ich sagte nur Skyrim und was war's? Käse, glaube ich. Ja, mehr muss man nicht wissen. Some might be looking for a little human connection in the darkness of space. Hello, stranger. I just finished cooking up some food. If you want to come on over, just pop on by. Some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own. The thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, <laughs> meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures. Then, realizing two hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You're... human. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. That DNA is so present here. It's in our random encounters, it's in our handcrafted quests. And it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe. There are over a thousand planets out there. Just waiting for you to visit. Ist euch schon mal aufgefallen, dass sie nie sagen, wie viele Planeten es genau sind? Sie sagen zwar immer, es sind tausend, es sind über tausend. Aber wie viele genau, habe ich bisher noch nie gehört. Und ich möchte erstmal jemanden sehen, der beweisen kann, dass es wirklich tausend Planeten sind. Wahrscheinlich kann man sie auch zählen in diesem, dieser Übersicht. Aber gut. We want you to feel like explorers. Breaking ground on new planets, exploring every inch of a mostly untouched galaxy. We want you to feel hopeful. We want you to feel this sense of awe and wonder. And sometimes a little fear. Oh. We're giving you a massive playground and a ton of toys. And just setting you free. Hört sich alles sehr gut an. Aber wie es sein wird, werden wir sehen. Hey everybody, we've shown you so much stuff, but we thought we'd just take a little break and show you something a, a little bit different. You know, we put so much detail into our game worlds and we love the opportunity to bring that into the real world with our collector's editions. And for this game, uh, we've done a watch. It is the Constellation Explorer's um, watch. Um, this is the watch that you actually get in the game that acts as part of your HUD where it's the compass and then environmental information. It connects to your phone to give you notifications and other information. And we've also designed this really cool case that it comes with, uh, Isvan. Yeah, we really took as much care and designed this case as we did the watch. Echt Our true. attention to detail and the game totally no translates to this. Inspired by the cases that the astronauts used during the Apollo era to bring back samples from the moon. It's got the intricate locking mechanism, authentic, heavy, comes with a constellation patch, NATO strap, and the overall functionality and believability of this as something that would exist in the world, in the Starfield universe. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. We actually have something else. Now that we're part of Xbox, we get to work with the amazing people on the Xbox hardware team, and together we have created this custom limited edition Den ich auch schon controller. It's awesome. It is now, you know, our Den favorite sieht auch aus. We love this because it's inspired by the actual controls of your spaceship. Ich habe hier schon den that, we've created the first ever Cyberpunk controller. Headset with auch ziemlich nice. And this is a perfect pairing with that controller. Den würde ich auch gerne kaufen, aber ich frage mich, für was brauche ich dann zwei Controller? Aber ja, es hat auch ein bisschen so einen Sammelgegenstand. Und sieht halt auch schön aus. Ja, auch die Uhr und die Kopfhörer. Property of Constellation. wirklich sehr abwechslungsreich aus. 
In every one of our games, we always put so much care into all those little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world, it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom on a galactic level. The freedom to experience both the exciting planets and the quiet ones. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. I think what is cool about this whole system that we, we generate the planet itself as a procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore. Our system builds a planet as the player approaches it. We stitch together block of terrain. After that, we have the system that adds interested locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter, or in plants. Aber wenn sich die Planeten aufbauen, indem der Player immer weiter geht oder näher kommt, heißt das dann, dass jede Person einen anderen gleichen Planeten hat? So sprich, wenn ich jetzt auf Planet B gehe und jemand anderes geht auf Planet B, habe ich dann einen anderen Planeten oder sieht anders aus als bei der anderen Person, die auf Planet B ist? Würde mich noch interessieren. Das hat sich gerade so angehört. Als ob es so wäre. To pick up. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that the best is known for. Weil es ja eben prozedural generiert ist. have been disrupting our experiments. Their habitat isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. So even if your friends were to visit the same planet that you had, you would have a different story to tell. Ah, gerade beantwortet. Sehr nice. Das heißt wirklich, jede einzelne Person hat einen anderen, eine andere Galaxie, eine andere Geschichte. Das macht es natürlich, natürlich einzigartig. Auch selber zu spielen, nicht nur irgendwie bei, bei jemandem zuzuschauen. Weil man eben etwas anderes erleben kann. Finde ich cool. Finde ich cool. Ich frage mich dann auch, wie gut und wie flüssig das Spiel laufen wird. It's completely up to you, how you want to interact with each planet. Whether you want to explore and see what you can find, harvest resources and be on your way, or simply take in the views. With the help of your scanner, you'll chart the uncharted and discover exotic wildlife. If you have the skills, you can even figure out that certain creatures and plants, you can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. When we were concepting these creatures, we really wanted to think of them as natural to the environment. We didn't want alien monsters. We wanted native wildlife. Something you've never seen before. Ja, sind schon halbe Aliens. When it comes to our exteriors, when the sun moves, all that light is calculated in real time through the atmosphere. Our biggest goal for lighting with Starfield was to make the game feel more filmic. To use lighting and color to really make it feel more cinematic. Ich glaube, das haben sie geschafft. Atmosphärisch sieht es schon ziemlich nice aus. So mit diesem Dunst und Nebel, mit Sonnenstrahlen. Wow. After some exploring, you can find a spot to set up a base camp. Outposts can be built almost anywhere on any planet. And the habitat modules come in all shapes and sizes, filling all different purposes. You can even live in them. Assign crew and companions to work at your outposts for added bonuses and set up extractors to harvest resources while you're away. What? 
something cool we have this time is we have a new fly cam where you can toggle between on foot building or you can now use a top down isometric camera which helps plan out larger parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves so that way you can really plan your structures and what the overall feel of your outpost ist ja nicht so als es schon reicht mit diesen raumschiffen and fine tune things much easier what the hell ist ja irgendwie schon 1000 1000 stunden spielzeit Warum habe ich vor kurzem erst gelesen, die Nexus Mod Seite ist schon online für das Spiel. Das heißt, man kann sich auf sehr viele Mods freuen, die wahrscheinlich noch mehrere tausend Stunden mit sich bringen werden. Add crafting and research stations in your outpost to utilize any resources you find or already have. Mod your weapons to adapt them to your playstyle. Different weapon sites and scopes, larger magazines, das auch noch. a selection of grips and barrels, different ammunition like explosive alles rounds. Kann man anpassen, alles. All you stealth players out there will surely need a suppressor. Nice. You can also choose to go hands-on with melee weapons. I think it's always a delicate balance between like what's realistic, what's sim, and what's Hollywood. And I think we sort of err on the side of like what's fun for the player. With Starfield, we've completely overhauled our combat. It's more dynamic, the animations are more fluid. What? It just feels great. We probably have more mods and more weapons in this game than I want to say any other game we've done before. No, stop it, y'all. Upgraded gear is just one of the many factors to pay attention to when engaging in combat. You may need to switch things up based on your environment. Wow. Gravity is different for each planet, and boost packs are excellent for getting around and for giving you an edge in combat. I think the boost pack will be a lot of people love. Sometimes you'll even feel like you're flying. This combat style looks really cool. Your gravity environments pose a different challenge. Firing a ballistic weapon in zero-g will actually push you backwards. Energy weapons, on the other hand, offer a more stable shooting experience. We also have mag weapons. These are high-powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays. Each barrel has its own targeting laser and can dish out some serious damage. Okay. Whether you want to get up close and personal with your own two fists, or you like more compact weapons like pistols and submachine guns, or maybe you prefer something bigger. Starfield's got you covered. Ja, sieht so aus. Einfach alles mit dabei. Waffenrad. Ein Waffenrad gab es ja, glaube ich, bisher bei Bethesda Games auch nicht nicht da richtig bin. Auch was Neues. Muss dazu zwar sagen, ich benutze das Waffenräder nicht so häufig, weil ich irgendwie, glaube ich, nie daran denke. Wo es eigentlich ziemlich praktisch wäre. aber auch wirklich nach sehr viele rumgeballert aus. Und auch nach vielen Gegnern. 
der geflogen ist. Thanks again for being with us today. We are just so grateful that you've taken the time and spent it here. I know there was probably a lot to take in. There's a lot to the game, even more than we could show here. You know, as we play it, we're always sharing these unique and special moments that only a game like this can bring. When I think about what makes it special, it really is the people here. This game is a reflection of the incredible and passionate team that made it. All of them putting something special of themselves into it. So let's hear some of their favorite moments. I love the way that our final combination of all the new tech has come together to create some of the most beautiful sunsets and sunrises we've ever had in any of our games. I love the creatures, the exploration, every biome is different. The word that comes to mind is vast. I like to use our photo mode to take rock star photos. I just love that constant feel of discovery and wow, I can't believe that there's more here. I'm most excited about our outpost building systems. My favorite part is every time you step out on a planet, it's a unique experience. You spend all this time building your ship and you see it on the landing pad. These things are gigantic. It's the kind of thing that you just can't get anywhere else. There's something about seeing a tower over in the distance and going, I know the gravity's low here. I think I can make that jump. My favorite part is biomes, spaceships, audio design, planets, the day-night cycle. Those details matter to me. Diplomacy, exploration, freedom, the ending. Vesco, obviously. I love the robot so much. The incredible amount of worlds we created. Sniper rifles, come on. Lever action, rocket launcher, brain sprout. I love, but Bus. some people might find creepy. I don't know. I know it's hard man. <laughs> the thing that I enjoy most about the game is the freedom to be who you want to be, <laughs> do what you want to do. It's what you've come to expect from a Bethesda title, but on a much bigger scale. On behalf of all of us, we can't wait for you to play Starfield and make your own special moments. Ich glaube, das wird ziemlich nice. Doch. Starfield. Mega viele Informationen. Wie gesagt, ich habe das Video auch noch nicht gesehen oder zumindest nicht ganz. Mindblowing. Wenn es wirklich so riesig, so detailreich wird. Wirklich mindblowing. Und das macht Lust auf mehr, wirklich. In letzter Zeit schaue ich auch wieder die Netflix-Serie Lost in Space. Von daher erst recht noch mehr Lust irgendwie auf so Space... Space Games. Weil es doch irgendwie faszinierend ist. Und wie mir auch schon aufgefallen ist, ist wahrscheinlich 2023 das Jahr der Games, die im Weltall spielen, kommt mir zumindest so vor. Nur um ein paar zu den Starfield, Fort Solis, Invincible, äh, dieses Telltale Game, äh, noch viele andere, ich weiß gar nicht was alles. Auf jeden Fall, äh, ja, da kommen ein paar wirklich nice Spiele raus. Starfield ist eines davon. Ich werde es mir sicherlich anschauen, sicherlich spielen, auch wenn es eine Menge Arbeit ist wahrscheinlich. Da stundenlang im Weltall die ganzen Planeten zu erkunden, die Schiffe zu bauen, die Outposts zu bauen, Waffen zu modifizieren. Crazy shit. Es hört sich nach ziemlich viel an. Und ich hoffe, es wird so gut, wie es hier versprochen wird. Von daher würde ich sagen, vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen bei diesem unglaublich langen Video. <lacht> ähm, wir sehen uns bei einem anderen Video wieder auf dem Kanal. Haut rein und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.